I'm Liz from No Trace and today I'm going to show you how to make a cloth drawstring bag that you can use to take with you shopping um, in place of plastic bags. These are awesome to hold your veggies um, or if you shop in, from bulk bins these are really good for holding like rice or pasta or lentils whatever you can get from your bulk bins. Um, I've been using cloth bags since about 2016 instead of plastic bags and I've never looked back or thought twice about it. Um, I even store my veggies in these. Um, and it's a really simple project. I recommend using an all natural fabric, so like a cotton or linen or even like a hemp um, fabric. The all-natural fabrics are a lot easier on the earth, and when they're totally used up, you can add them to your compost pile so they never end up uh, polluting um, waterways or soil. So um, it's a really simple project, and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so to get started with your drawstring bags, you're going to need a few different things. Um, the first piece you're going to need is your fabric, and as I suggested, I would use an all-natural fiber, so like cotton or linen or something that's hemp-based. Um, all-natural fibers will break down in your compost um, pretty easily versus synthetic fibers that will potentially be around for ages. Um, this uh, fabric is actually old sheets, so I um, love to use old cotton sheets, and it's been cut down to size. So what you're going to need is two pieces of fabric that measure about 13 inches across and 15 inches tall. And this is a nice size if you um, shop for greens or, or big heads of lettuce. Um, it'll hold a lot of vegetables. You can definitely make your bag smaller or bigger. Um, you basically just want two pieces of fabric that are the same size um, to get started. So I'm using um, 13 by 15 inches. The other thing you're going to need is a piece of ribbon or cording um, or a little piece of hemp string. This is um, cotton twill tape that I like to use in my bags. Um, basically anything that you'll be using for the actual drawstring part of your drawstring bag. And you are going to want your ribbon to measure um, uh, 26 inches. Actually, it measures my ribbon. Okay, so you're going to want your ribbon to measure, this one is about 31 inches. So you want your ribbon to be long enough that it is as wide as your bag and then some, so that you can tie a knot in the end. So this is about 31 or 32 inches, and that should be plenty um, to fit in the bag. The other thing that you're going to need is um, a safety pin to help get your string through the tubing after we create it. Um, I have one of these cool little tools because I make a lot of drawstring bags, um, but you definitely don't need this in order to um, run your ribbon through. You can just use a safety pin to run your ribbon through at the end. And then I also use a chopstick or you could just use a pencil with an eraser um, that comes in handy for when you're turning out your corners when you're all done. And then it's good to have a measuring tape or maybe you have a cutting mat like this just so you can get your fabric cut um, to the size that you want. Okay, so once you have your materials gathered, uh, we'll start sewing. Um, the way that I make my drawstring bags is a little extra heavy duty because I use them a lot and I, I throw them in the wash um, and I use them again and again. So I'm going to show you how to make these in a way that the edges won't fray over time. Now, if you have a serger, um, you would want to use a serger for this step. But since most people don't have a serger, um, I recommend using a zigzag stitch from your sewing machine for this first step. Now, if you don't have 
a zigzag stitch on your machine, don't let that stop you from making these bags. I would just skip the zigzag stitch part, or you could try to do um, a French um, hem or French seam, uh, which is a little bit more involved, but totally doable. Um, I'm not going to go over that this go over that in this video though. So um, I would recommend using a zigzag stitch for this first few steps. Um, the first thing you're going to do is zigzag stitch along two sides on each piece of fabric. So the top and then one long side on both pieces of fabric. Now on your machine, if you can adjust your zigzag stitch, I would adjust it so that it's, it's at one of the wider settings. Um, and so I'm going to do that on my machine, turn it up to a 5. And now I'm going to go ahead and zigzag stitch all along here. And here. Okay, so now after you have um, two sides zigzagged on both pieces of fabric, you're going to line up your two pieces with the right sides facing. Now, this fabric is just one color, so there's not really a right or wrong side. But if you have a right side of, on your fabric, you want to line them up so the right sides are facing. Okay, and then you're going to take a pin and pin them together. And the first pin that you're going to put is at three inches down from this top corner. We This is where we start sewing. Um, this, this is going to be where we fold down um, our, our drawstring casing eventually. Okay, so put a pin there. And then you're probably going to want to put a pin in a couple other spots just so that the fabric doesn't move around on you too much. If you want to just go for it without pinning, you could do that too. Okay. So now that you've got it pinned together, take it back to your machine and you're going to now zigzag stitch along these remaining two sides and you're going to stitch the two pieces of fabric together. Okay, so now that you've done these two sides together, just double check that you actually got both pieces of fabric, um, and I did, so both pieces of fabric are together. Um, you still want to keep this pin in that marks three inches from this corner down, but you can take out your other pins now that your fabric is joined. So the next step is that we are going to change our machine to a straight stitch again. Um, and I, if you can adjust the width, I like to adjust my width a little bit to make it wider, just so that um, with this this type of a seam, you don't need your stitches to be super close together. Okay, so machines at a straight stitch. We are now going to straight stitch down this side, over, and then up all the way to the top edge. Okay, so but you don't start until under this pin. So these two are going to be loose. These two corners are going to be loose from each other. And remember to back stitch at the start and stop. Okay, so now I've stitched all along um, the three sides, and I should have uh, mentioned that you're stitching obviously on the inside of your zigzag stitches, and I stitched about three eighths of an inch over from this very uh, far edge. So 3 8 inch seam allowance around these three sides. Okay, now you can take your pin out and the next step 
is that you are going to fold over this top edge to make the drawstring casing part. And you want to fold it over about an inch all around. Okay. Now if you wanted to, you could get your iron out and press this um, nice and flat. Uh, you can skip that step too if it's if your fabric doesn't really need that, just go ahead and press it with your fingers. Um, now, you also could pin it if you want. Um, I generally don't pin it because it, it doesn't tend to move around a ton while I'm sewing, but if you wanted to, you could pin it. So you're basically now going to be sewing a straight stitch um, about a quarter inch from the edge of your fabric all the way around um, your opening. Okay, so you want to be careful that you're not sewing the two sides of your bag together so you, your bag is nice and open. And then you're going to want to uh, back stitch at the start and stop of your bag. So here we go. So now that you've sewn all along the edge of your casing, you are ready to turn your bag right side out. And this is where your pencil or a top stick comes in handy. So I'm just going to gently push the corners out so that they're nice and sharp. Okay. And then you're going to take your ribbon or your string um, or your cording, whatever you have, and uh, if you have one of these cool tools, you just grab it and slide this little tightener down, and then you're going to run it through your casing. If you don't have one of these tools, a uh, safety pin works great too. The bigger the pin, the easier and faster it'll go. Take your safety pin with your ribbon and just slide it through the casing, push it, with one hand and then grab it and move it forward like this. And the more you do this, the easier it gets. Okay, and once you get your casing, um, your string all the way around, uh, you just tie it in a knot, tie the two ends together in a knot. Well, thanks so much for watching this tutorial today. Um, I really hope that it helps you on your journey to zero waste living and getting plastic out of your life and out of your kitchen. Um, don't forget to like uh, and subscribe. Also, um, put in the comments what you're going to use your new bag for. And uh, finally, don't forget that you can shop for bags um, like this, made by me, um, at No Trace Shop. Dot com. Thanks and have a great day.